Ganesh, you've been doing a lot of research on this Gen X malware. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, actually, it's another day, another week, another <laughs> IoT botnet. Sure. In this case, it's called a Gen X botnet. It kind of leverages two exploits related to real tech as well as Hawaii routers. IoT, DDoS, botnets have been in the topic for a while. We've seen Mirai. I think this one is basically taking existing uh, vulnerabilities, such as the Satori, and improvising on it, and making sure that it's sneaky and not noisy and you cannot easily detect it. The interesting thing about Gen X is uh, basically this is hosted at some place where actually a gaming-related uh, activity is supported. Like, okay. for example, multi-layer gaming. Yeah. In this case, San Andreas, Grand Theft Auto, multi multiplayer programming actually support is done by this specific server farm. The same actors actually, they are also offering, you know, DDoS protections to your oh. GTA servers. So they're selling both sides of that fence. They're yes. selling the DDoS and they're selling the... Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Are, are they selling DDoS or are they just using their botnet? Actually, as a... that's where I'm going. Okay. Actually, that's one part of it. Another product, the service they have is uh, they're offering DDoS services attacks up to 300 gigabits per second. That's just <laughs> for twenty dollars. Oh wow! Okay, so if that's if they really have 300 gigabits per second, they're they're undercharging because <laughs> that's <laughs> that's very cheap and that's that's a heck of a uh, attack. Deal, too. right? And I think that's why people will want to. <laughs> I mean, on one side of the coin, they're offering the you know, protection for their you know, yeah. gaming uh, customers. Uh -huh. On the other side, they're providing the, you know, basically DDoS attacks to give the users to maybe probably unfair advantage. You know, if you're uh, gaming, you know, you sure. want to take down your opponents. So you take them offline. You yeah, you them. take them offline. Yeah. And $20 for 300 gigabits, yeah. it's uh, very tempting for a, you know, an online gamer to, you know, probably Correct. fell into the trap. The connection between DDoS and gaming has been around for, well, as long as internet gaming has been around. The whole idea of somebody who's running both sides of it is not unheard of, but certainly not very common. On the x-axis, we have the timeline. And on the y-axis, actually, number of unique sources per hour. Mm -hmm. Basically, how many scanners we are seeing per hour. As you can see, I think uh, here we are showing a 30 days worth of data here. Uh, the ports are uh, 52869 as well as 37215 TCP. We shown in the graphically how these two ports worked in tandem, how uh, at what point actually we are seeing the spike. This botnet came around around this time, as you see the little blip here, I think at the start of February. So okay. so wait, the spike that we're seeing here, this is not, as far as we know, Gen X? Gen X is Gen X actually just started. Just that blip? Just, just that blip. Huh. Okay. Uh, but uh, when we were looking back past 30 days, actually you see somewhere in the first week, January, there's a huge spike on these two activities. If we go back, I think Matt, you probably remember, this is the timeline actually, Satori source code has been leaked. Mm. Oh. Okay. So once it's been leaked, you know, people are actually trying to, you know, look for those uh, sure. ports, you know. Yeah. Everybody wants to take the share of it. Uh, with respect to what we found is uh, the geographic distribution of the scanners used by this botnet at this point is heavily concentrated in Asia Pack. In this case, we see most of them are Asia Pack. Yeah, looks okay. like the gaming world there is pretty prevalent. South Korea, probably. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, Actually, Matt is uh, right on the money. It's a South Korea, mm -hmm. and maybe followed a little bit of China. Okay. This is the initial set when we saw Gen X in the first week of February. Okay. There are about uh, 400 scanners at this time. And uh, I have another interesting graph taking it further. This is uh, almost new. It's, uh, it's from the last weekend, maybe, I think last Saturday. Interesting. This is on another port, 52869. Mm. Compared to Realtek and Hawaii, actually, the Hawaii port is actually more active compared to this 52869 sources I'm showing it here. Mm -hmm. But since the past few days, actually, the traffic on 52869 TCP has exploded. It's for the port 52869 I was uh, talking it. So your first graph showed up to like uh, the, the 5th of February or just beyond that, but here's the... The continuation Here. of that same graph? A continuation of the same graph, but I want to show you, you know, the level of actual scanning increased on 52869. Yeah, significantly. So it kind of you know, went hand in hand until up to this point. I think it's the start of last weekend. And suddenly it went up and, I mean, kind of it's uh, stabilizing a little bit there. But you can see here, at one point almost it reached, you know, so 14, 
And now we're around, uh, actually, I think, 5,000 source wow. scanners for our... Wow. And that's just for the 52869 bug? 5, it doesn't 8, seem like there's any significant change. Uh, not much, not much on 37215. It's interesting to see this pattern, right? So because we are tracking data and you've been monitoring it, again, going back to you know, Matt's point, we're able to see the scale, how it's changing. Right? Yes. So maybe I should ask you, does Gen X have code once you've infected a machine, does that machine also start scanning, or is it purely a DDoS bot at that point? No, it can it can start scanning. Okay. Uh, but the controller has the capability. I think um, it can decide whether it can be part of the DDoS or not. All That's right. so. I think uh, you'll leverage a 300 gigabits per mm. second. I wonder if the people who are their customers would even know the difference between a 300 gigabit per second DDoS attack and like a five gigabit per second DDoS attack. Uh, I, I don't. Because if you take somebody off a residential connection, mm. five is, may do it just as well as 300. Yeah, I mean maybe you can just do the um, amplification attack at one of the protocols they use for the gaming. Mm -hmm. And the average user doesn't even know whether what's the size of the attack, Correct. like you pointed out. Yeah. Yeah, but it is interesting to see that they're actually selling things like DDoS to a gaming world. Oh. So eventually the awareness is going to pick up, right? They might not know the bandwidth, you know, scale, but the fact that we are going to see more and more of the IoT type attacks increase. And because those are the devices that really nobody is thinking about in terms yeah. of, you know, a security view. I think the cool thing about this one, I mean, from the design perspective, but not the malware, yeah. maliciousness perspective, they actually heavily borrow, you know, how the Setor and the Mirai works. Mm -hmm. The best thing that people can do is really to make sure that their devices are up to date. Unfortunately, some devices will never get patched, and that's not necessarily the fault of the user, that maybe just the company has decided to end of life certain hardware. When you're making a decision to purchase an, any IoT device, just pay attention to the reputation of the vendor or the seller. Human tendency to go and grab the cheapest one, but the thing is, uh, those cheapest devices may not have the security posters built into it, and they may not have the longevity, and the vendor may not support you in the additional patches to make it you know, more secure. The consideration should be given how a user can actually update the patches by themselves, because most of the devices doesn't have interface. So either you have to go through some web page, maybe some other means to go to the admin page and do the update the actually the patches, maybe update the credentials.